Well, today we're going to talk about core defects and how they affect the value of your timber, the way you should uh, manage your timber standing, the way you should cut logs, um, and, and why we cut logs a certain way, and why uh, log buyers look for certain things within the logs. We got here a chunk of firewood, soft maple. And uh, this is a good illustration of core defects. This piece was way up the tree. And uh, look at all these little pin knots. These little knots. All three sides. Those are core defects. Now this is way up the tree. You know, up into the firewood area of the tree. And uh, you've got about that much. I mean, three inches. You couldn't get any lumber out of here without hitting the edge of the board you know, the weighing out here, the bark, or into these core defects. The higher up the tree you go, the closer these little core defects, these tiny knots, are to the edge. Um, and I'll show you why that is important for us to uh, practice good forestry and keep those core defects uh, closer to the center. So uh, you'll have to... Excuse my poor uh, penmanship and poor artistry, but this is a sapling. Happy little guy. And uh, he grows branches. And he grows branches. They get generally wider on hardwood, you know. Uh, but they all grow branches. One more branch. Maybe we should put an angel on top. And uh, so just for instance, if you hung your hat on this limb right here, you come back in 10 years, it's still the same height. Uh, you don't hang something on this limb and it grows up the tree, you know. Uh, those limbs don't move upward. They stay right where they are. They, that's how they stay. Now, uh, otherwise, if you hung a posted sign, um, God, I think posted signs are ugly, but if you hung a posted sign or a fence or something like a bird feeder on a tree and you come back in 10 years, it'll be up there 20 feet, even if you hung it five feet. It doesn't work that way. The things stay at the same level and those limbs stay at the same level. So that, that's how a tree grows. And then as the tree grows, we're going to move over here. We're going to do this all over again. Wee. Those limbs kind of break off. They, they don't really, they kind of break off. They get grown over. And a tree, the first thing a tree does is gets its height. And then it starts to get diameter. So a tree will grow something like this. There's what your log might look like. This would be your roots down here. You know, this would be a stump where we're going to step up there and cut that tree. Now, if you look down here at the bottom, core defects close to the center. Look at this. I'll draw a V, an inverted V. Two inverted triangles show you what this is. Those core defects are close to the center at the bottom of the tree. At the top of the tree, they stick right out, sometimes even past the sides, you know, when you get up into the limmy section. Um, this is your clear lumber. This is your valuable lumber. And uh, it takes a while for that to develop. A tree has to get its diameter. So if you're cutting a 15-inch uh, tree on the stump, you know, 14-inch breast height tree, something like that, boy, you're, you're, you're through this area and you're already into those core defects quickly. If this tree's 40 inches, 30 inches is even a better number, you know, 20 on something like hard maple, 25, uh, you got a lot more clear lumber in here. And you notice the higher up the tree you get, the closer these core defects are to the edge. So boom, there's our first 10 foot log, lots of clean lumber. There's our second 10, 12 foot log, whatever you got, lots of clear lumber. Here's the third log. This is why the third logs go down in value so rapidly. You're into those core defects. Again, right here on this. Core defects, close to the center, higher in the tree. This, this piece of soft maple came from way up the tree. So to bring that back to a, uh, a practical term, uh, 
something you can use. The reason we cut a bigger tree and try not to harvest them when they're young. Now there's exceptions, you know, maybe they're too thick and you have to get them out of there or maybe you're targeting a certain species or we've been doing a ton of this the last year. We have the emerald ash borer here where I live and it's killing all of our ash and it's going to die. And we're getting that ash out before uh, it's, it's dead and well, there's still some value in it. So uh, there's exceptions, but generally as you're managing a woodlot, your most valuable trees are bigger. Um, and within reason, everything has a shelf life, you know, that's, that's why you, it's why you cut corn at a certain time or combine your oats at a certain time or, you know, pull your carrots out of your garden because, you know, they start to go the other way at some point and so do these trees. But cutting them too young is, is uh, costing you a lot of money. And, and also, uh, as we're cutting logs, that's why I want you to understand why your veneer quality, your rotary quality is generally in that butt log. 90% of veneer logs are the butt logs. Stave logs also in white oak. They're, it's the butt log. A small percentage are the second log. None of them are up the tree. Um, I, I may have in my career seen one triple red oak cell. And I mean, I've seen millions of board feet of, of veneer cell. Um, and, you know, if you sell, if you sell a hundred veneer logs, 95 of them are going to be the butt log because of this, because of the core defects. So, uh, just something, I hope uh, that's something you can break down and utilize as you're cutting logs and uh, as you're managing your woodlots. So I uh, really appreciate the time and let's uh, go to the woods and put that to use. Okay, Nick.